Uh, hi, morning. So great everyone is here. Last day, last session. I understand that this has been an intense week. Um, my name is Magnus, Magnus Norberg, and I live in Stockholm, in Stockholm, Sweden. And I am a dance producer and a dance agent. And I've been doing it for now maybe about 20 years. And in various different parts of this sector. And as a wrap up to this week of all these great lectures, these, all these uh, performances you've seen, all the classes you've taken, um, I'll try today to give you in a brief hour or maybe 50 minutes, uh, some sort of guidance and tips on what I and my team and the people that we work with think are important stuff to think about when venturing further in, into dance. Um, and I'll, I'll talk for, for 40 minutes, we'll, we won't do a break, <laughs> and then we'll have questions at the end uh, for you guys to ask me. And I will try to be very slow, and if you guys think that I speak too fast, just raise your hand and I will, I will, I will, I will take the speed down for sure. Um, I know you guys n now probably know each other a little bit better than you did on Monday. But I would still like to start this thing with you guys saying your name out loud into this room again. Not for you guys to remember it in the room, but for yourself to hear your name. Because your name is something that you will work with continuously throughout your career, regardless of what you're going to do. If you're going to be a maker, a teacher, a creator, an agent, whatever. And how will you relate to this name? And what is it? What does it mean? So while we're doing this, we'll start from here and go around the room very slowly, just to hear these beautiful names in the room. <laughs> I want you just to write them down on something. If you have something in front of you, just write down that name so you can look at it a little bit while we, while we, while we are uh, going through the stuff today. Okay, so should we start here? Go ahead. Marina. Matteo. Laura. Zilia. Mariella. Kira. Rita. Miriam, Anna, Stephanie, Isabel, Nathan, Noel, Anna, Marta, Valeria, Anna, Paulina, Amy, Ingrid, Julia, Ivana, Marina, Victoria. <laughs> Could we do this one more time? And could you say your full name to me very slowly? So when I came into this room, I said, my name is Magnus, Magnus Norberg. I think I'm very proud of my whole name. I want my people to know my whole name. It doesn't mean that maybe I will use my whole name my whole, my whole life. Maybe I'm indigenous. Maybe I have a spirit name. Lots of people have a spirit name now. Lots of people carry a spirit animal. They have a spirit animal. Lots of people choose an artist name. Lots of people have an alias who they write through. Lots of people are completely secret. You know, they're artists, but you don't know who they are. So this is also worth thinking about who do you, th how do you want to pursue this in your artistic life? So can we do it again, but from this side instead? And say your, f your full name. My name is, and tell me what your name is. Slowly, so everyone can hear it in the room. Go ahead. My name is Hanna Andreasen Loke. My name is Valeria Chavez Chong. <coughs> My name is Marta Maria Chong. My name is Noan Kula. My name is Anna Jablonski. <coughs> My name is Merten Bela Böhmer. 
My name is Ana Isabel Vieira Carvalho. My name is Stephanie Eva. My name is Hannah Moraes. My name is Miriam Martin Lopez. My name is Frida Richardson. My name is Kira Arani. My name is Mariela Nunez Kak. My name is Celia Ogonia Rotna. My name is Laura Filipic. My name is Mateo Babic. My name is Marina Bragic. My name is Noemi Salie Ukamra. My name is Sutwa Hand. My name is Mabita Schwab. My name is Ivona Mezi. My name is Dalila Dijanani. My name is Victoria Tikali. My name is Mirko Hetzel. <laughs> <laughs> the most beautiful thing I ever heard. What's your name? My name is Bonita Welcome. Um, my name is Elba. So I write the most <laughs> yeah. thing. Elba. Thank you. It's the most beautiful thing I ever heard. That is amazing. And there is something about a name that is really, really important. How are you thinking about this name? Do you, is it comfortable to say it? Do you want it out there? Do you want to be famous? Do you not want to be famous? Do you want to work with dance, but not be a name that everybody speaks of? Do you want to be in dance and be a name that everybody speaks of? Do you want to work doing under a different name? Do you want to be secret? Do you want to have an alias? Do you want to have an artist name? Look down on that paper and look at your name and see what this really means to you right now in this space. What do you feel that you are at this point. You don't have to tell this to anybody else than yourself now. What do you, wh which path are you on? Are you a creator? Are you now a dancer? Are you an aspiring dancer? Are you trying out dance? Is it something that you're trying out? Are you trying out dance while trying out something else as well? Have you completely decided that dance is going to be what you're going to work with your whole life? How are you with this? And these things are important to check in continuously when you are working in a field like this and in any field. And I think it's also really, really important to give oneself a pat on the back and say, I am in this room because I've done so much work and I've come to this point where I'm in right now. So just for a little bit, I want you to think back a little bit. If you think about these movies when you rewind your life, or you've seen these things on, on uh, you know, when people have a picture that they've taken of their kid every day at the same time. If you think back, 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 back. Can you remember? <laughs> Can you remember when you started dancing? Can you, can you actually remember when you started dancing? What, what was it? Was it in the living room? Did somebody tell you to start dancing? What was it? How did, you, how did, this, how did this start? And why I'm, why I'm mentioning this as a first thing this morning is that I think it's really, really important to think about why one has chosen to spend one's life in dance. And it is a beautiful life to be in dance. It is an amazing thing. It's a hard thing, it's a tough thing, it's competitive. Sure, everything is hard and tough and competitive. And there's a cliche about dance field and, and the performing arts being more competitive and hard than any other fields. It's tough in any other field. So we can just maybe skip those cliches a little bit and you think about the fact that we've chosen all in this room to work with dance. It's quite an amazing thing. This is what we want to do. This is what we want to spend our life on, whatever you're going to do with it. You're either going to be a performer, a maker, uh, a teacher. Maybe you have come from your hometown, you've gone out into the world, and then you're going to go back to your hometown and be the person that is the engine for more people to do and create a life in dance. That in itself is a really, really beautiful thing. 
Maybe you're going to be a choreographer who tours the world. That is also a beautiful thing. But both those two things in terms of dance are equally important because maybe the teacher that, that goes back to the hometown will raise that artist who once will be that choreographer that goes into the world. Think about your teacher. Think about the people that maybe went back to your hometown and went back to those places and gave you those first opportunities. Those people are really important and you can be those people. You can be many people in dance. I started out creating work after school, right after I went, went to theater and dance school. They weren't very good. They weren't very good. They, they fell apart and they weren't really good. But I had something else. I really, really loved dance and I could see the things, things that were great and I could help people, I could inspire people. So I chose another path. I chose to be on the other side of it and to support and help artists. That is one thing that you can do. To be a teacher is an, maybe possibly the most in, one of the most important things in dance. In this case, you will work both with the professional field, but you will also work with the other field that, that deals with dance. The majority of people in the world that love dance, that do dancing, that dance every day, they go to take training, but it's not their profession. They do it because they also love dance. They not, haven't chosen to have it as a profession, but they do it because they really love to dance, and they love for their kids to dance, they love themselves to dance. You can also become the dancer. And of course, many of you are on that path to, to continue and be the dancer and be a dancer for a while and maybe go into creation. And that is also equally important. I'm going to talk today about four different sections that I think are important to, to kind of navigate in, in when you are threading into professional life. Uh, and on each of these, I will give you some pointers that I think you should keep preparing and keep thinking of. And I will send these to Walter and the team so they can send them out also, these bulletin points. So you don't have to write anything down. Just go with me and listen a little bit today. You don't have to make, make lots of notes. And before I do that, I'm going to tell you what my daily life is about. I run a small office in my hometown with two or three colleagues right now, two other producers. We work with about 15 choreographers and makers every day on their development of their work, which means that in the morning somebody calls in and says, the truck is not at the touring place, uh, the grant is not in already, I have no idea what I'm going to do with this piece in two years, uh, there's something in my bank account that I don't know about. Everything to the very, very practical, to the very holistic and very large and huge things. And that's my daily life. And we produce and we create and we distribute work. Um, and I've done that, had this office for about 12 years uh, and worked with lots of different artists. And in this uh, daily work, I would say there are four sections that we continuously work with. It is creation, creating work, creation. It is building structure around the artists and helping them to, to, to find the structure. It is looking for opportunities, which includes funding, commissions, touring, etc., etc., And we work with networking and distribution. And you will hear about networking lots and lots in your, in your, in your daily life. You're supposed to network all the time and meet new people. That's what people tell you in any, other, any, any sector. It has nothing to do with dance. Networking has nothing to do with the performing arts. It's a, it's a term that everybody uses. But the reason why I wanted you guys to speak your names is that this room now is probably your strongest network of all networks that you can have. You have no idea who in this room is going to run the, the ballet in Flanders in 20 years. We have no idea. Somebody, maybe, maybe someone, someone in, in this room. Somebody's going to be a, a, an agent in, uh, in 30 years and sell work around the world. Someone in this room. Someone is going to leave dance go into some other sector and then make lots and lots of money and then say, damn it, I'm going to spend this money on dance. <laughs> Someone, one of you, I'm pr I promise you, will, will, will leave dance and, 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 and do that. One of you, some of you, will be performers and dancers and have a beautiful creation, creation life. Some of you might leave the sector and might, some of you might be in it. Doesn't really matter. Dance will always be with you. This is your strongest network. Cherish the network. Cherish the network. And take every opportunity to build strong relationships with people. 
And one of the first things that I say about networking is that you never know who is in the room. If you go into a space, uh, this is very, very typical in, in dance and performance. The janitor will at one point become the artistic director of the, of the house. It's very, very common that people work in a long time at a place and they start by scrubbing the floor and they, they go up and, and then they run the place. The, most in, the, the top hen in any organization is not always the person that, is, that, that, that runs it or, or does the decisions. So when also looking at into the world and looking at, at who you, you want to talk to, etc., go to people that you like talking to. Go towards people that you are feeling comfortable with, that you have fun with, that you, that you feel that you have an exchange with. And I'm sure you already feel that you have exchanges with each other in this, in this, in this space and in this room. I think it's really important to think about this fact that, that you've chosen to work with dance. And that dance is a, uh, an area which lots of people in the world deals with all the time, but it's not their profession. Anybody, you know, you will talk to your parents and, and, your, and their friends maybe. Maybe your parents know what you're doing, or maybe their friends don't know what you're doing. But they will know something about dance. Everybody has a relationship to dance. But explaining that you've chosen it as a profession can sometimes be a little bit, uh, can, be, can be hard to, to define and, and explain. But it is a really important and beautiful thing. Okay, creation. I want you to think back about how this started for you. And I want you to think back, can you remember also for yourself and write this down just for yourself? Is there a piece of work that you saw somewhere in the beginning of your career or your, the beginning of your work that really, really captured you? What captured you with that, with that piece? Are there pieces that have captured your, your imagination during your, your, your career? I keep a diary of my best pieces that I've, that I've seen. Not just in dance, but in anything. I keep a diary of great artwork that I go back to, that I re-look at, films, movies, uh, artworks, exhibitions, albums, etc. It does not matter what it is. But this is my first, uh, uh, my first sort of suggestion. Keep a diary of great things that you like and love. And maybe some of those things were like really, really early on, and now you think, oh, they weren't that important, that piece that I saw, this small thing that I heard, this song that I heard. But they are important. Inspiration is really, really important. And you can really lose inspiration quickly. So keep a diary of those things. Write them down and, and keep, keep the secret diary for yourself. Um, I call it a creative diary, and this creative diary is something different than an administrative diary and a diary that you keep uh, contacts and finances in. So keeping this diary alive is really important for your creative work. And once you've done this uh, diary or started creating it, I also suggest that you start creating some sort of statement for yourself about why it is you dance. And this is nothing you have to say to anybody else. This is really just important for yourself. Why are you still in dance and why are you dancing? What, is the, what are the things that you feel are important in your work? Why do you think it's important that you are in dance? And why do you think it's important that other people integrate and interact with dance? And these might be very sort of like self-explanatory and holistic, and they might be uh, very grand words, etc. But it, 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 it is in, it's important. And it's important to keep, keep them alive in your head. And even if you're not going to be the head of a ballet or the creator of something or, or, or creating pieces, etc., it's important for you to keep those things alive. Looking back at that diary when you get tired of dancing, looking back at that, that, that diary when you, when you feel like, Nobody's listening to me, nobody's seeing me, nobody's watching me. Looking back at the diary when people will start going, uh, uh, cutting down on the arts, uh, when you, you know, have those arguments in front of you. So keeping that creative diary and keeping it as a fun thing is also really good. Another thing about this is to also keep track of inspiration when it comes. I try to tend to, try to, to write down stuff immediately. So yes, use the notes app in the, in the phone or whatever you're using. 
Like, write it down. It might not seem important, but you might, you might forget it. And this thing is, you know, maybe I'm looking at that tree and I'm loving the structure of those leaves. Maybe that sounds very, very, very simple, but it might be at the base of an idea of something that you want to build. And this, I think, is really, really important. Super simple things can grow into really important stuff. So maybe I'm looking at the tree and I see the structure of those leaves and I think that that's really giving me inspiration now. And building on that idea might build into an idea of a funding a scheme, that is of, a, of a something that I want to, to fun, uh, find funding for and raise money for and eventually create the work around. Uh, it's really important that those simple things can, 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 can be super important. So uh, don't uh, uh, distinguish between things that you feel are important or not important. Write them down when you, when you see them and when, they, and when they come to you. Also, try to find your water holes for inspiration. And maybe you can think about this, like where do you really find inspiration? Is it in the studio? Is it here? Is it on Netflix? Is it in a club? Is it while running? Is it while swimming? Like what, what is it? And those things, try to keep them alive. And if they're not there, maybe you need to find some other water holes. And I'm saying water holes as this is kind of the, the, the thing, you know, where, people, where, where animals go and find their water to get, to get, get back, to, to get dehydrated, when they're dehydrated, to get hydrated again. So a list of those water holes can be really important. And if that is sleeping, that is also fine. And if that is running, that is also fine. If that is finding lots of people to be with all the time, that is also fine. And in terms of this thing of being super active and not active, I'm, I used to take two examples from, from, the nat from nature. Sharks, for example, you know, they can live forever on the bottom of the sea, but they continuously need to swim. And they just found this shark that was 560 years old who had swum, swum around for 560 years because if they don't swim, they die. So are you a shark? Maybe you need to move all the time. Maybe that's, your, maybe that's your active animal. A panda, on the other hand, they need to sleep 22 hours a day. They need to be completely still, otherwise they will die. So don't try to compare this active energy or this non-active energy to anybody else in, in, in the world. You, you are your own animal. You can't make this up and you, you'll be forced to train and do and, and, and train and, and of course to take classes and all of this. But I think it's really important to think about what, like, what is my, what's my time structure? How do I work? Maybe I can't work uh, as actively as the, as the person next to me. Maybe I need a long time to come to a decision, uh, but my decision will be great. Maybe I make lots of small decisions and they're not so great, but they eventually become one good decision. So this is really important. Think about this. What kind of animal do you think that you are in this? In the, in, in, in this? And in this creative diary, I would ask you to start uh, creating a list of maybe a few words, maybe 10 to 15 words that you think are important for you when you work in your daily life as a dancer, as a teacher, and maybe as an aspiring creator as well. And those very few words, those 10, 15 words, will help you to also later on write longer texts. If you have a hard time writing text, this is a very, very easy trick, trick to do. Just start writing down single words, and eventually you will have a text. You will have a text. If you have a hard time, if, you need, if you're a writer and you, you need, really need to, to write slowly, freely, then you do that. But 10 to 15 words are really important. And I did this when I was young, and those words, some of those words are still there, and some of those words are gone. So keeping this track of this list of words is also really, really important. Also, important at this stage of your life, try to write down a short bio of where you are right now. I am et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I'm a dancer, maker, teacher. I've done this and thus, this and this and have a short bio that really, that's prepared. Because you will never know when you need it. And you don't want to, you don't want to uh, be under pressure when people ask you for stuff. So try to create these texts 
when you're, when, when you're not in need of them. Um, and if you need help and, and, uh, and, and somebody to look at it, maybe you can ask somebody in the room, just write down a text about yourself and then show it to somebody else and exchange that with each other so you can look at those texts together. In this creation uh, aspect of this, there are two things that I think are really important. Make also a list of people that you admire and you think are doing great stuff. They might, this might be a very short list or it might be a very long list. And then if you do feel that you have the courage, go towards these people. Many people will be open to share their own journeys and their, and their, own, you know, their own struggles and their own you know, failures and their own successes. But also to look up if there's a choreographer or a maker or a teacher, etc., do actually make the effort to go towards that context and, 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 and go towards it. And maybe this could be really important because it can be easily, you can easily be drawn with the group as a group towards certain things in a sector. But maybe you should individually think, individually think about what you think is important for you. Who are the people that you admire and look up to? Who are your role models? And maybe also if they're unattainable, you know, if, if it's Beyonce, maybe it's hard to, to, to call her. But you can definitely look in to what people have done in their career and take inspiration from it. Take real inspiration from people that you admire. There's more than just listening to a song. There's also this really listening in, uh, looking into what they did. How did they build their career? How did they go through it? How did they get to where they, were do what, what, where they, were, where, where they are right now? Ask for a mentorship. As a, at, a, uh, at, some, at a place where you really want to work. This is what I did when I was really young. I used to ask and say, can I, can I just be in this office for, for a bit? Because I want to learn. Show people that you want to learn and access that knowledge. So internships is really, really important. And if you're up to it, do the make coffee and sweep the floor assignments because you will learn everything from making the coffee and sweeping the floor at a dance company. Do it for a while. It will really, really get you information and knowledge about what you're going to do. All right. I also think it's really important to think about which skills you want to sharpen as a performer or a maker or a teacher. And this I'll give you a few seconds to think about. If you think about where you are right now, are there certain skills that you think that you not necessarily lack, but that you want to have? Instead of thinking of it as being best and better, think about what it is that you want to have. And this could be very, very different things. I, I, I do want to be better, and I want my body to be better at classical ballet. F fine, I, that, I, that, I want that. Okay go towards it. I'm curious about martial arts. I want to, to connect my, my, my ballet background with martial arts because I think that's going to do something for me. Those things are maybe at this point in this room really, really important to think about. And also that is also a way to be individual in it, to seek out this, that individual training that you're looking for. Many great performers that we work with and that I work with, uh, when, I look, when I look back on it, I see what they, they, what they did. They did, their, they, 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 they did their, their regular training. They went to school. But they also did something, something very odd, something different. There was something else that they did that made their, uh, uh, their individuality come across some other training. Uh, they read philosophy. Uh, they went to cooking school, uh, they went to martial arts, they connected things that were very disparate from each other to, uh, uh, in their own interest, uh, in, in their own body. And this is not something that you have to do, but maybe you do have an interest for it. So this could be really interesting to think about uh, at this point. What are those things that you, what are those skills that you would like to explore? I also want to say in this section, if you want to start creating stuff, if you want to start creating pieces, start creating pieces. Mm -hmm. 
if you want to start creating pieces, I'm going to say this again. If you want to start creating pieces, start creating pieces. Because there's no other way that you can, that you can do it than, than, than starting. And maybe that is, that is also how you utilize the network that you're in right now with the people that you are at this age and at this stage. Utilize the fact that there's a curiosity of working together and trying out stuff. Because the opportunities later on can be a little bit harder to find than where you are right now. And trying out is really, really important. It is easier to find opportunities to train and get better at you know, technique than it is to create. To create, you really need to create your own, um, uh, your own context for it. So start trying it out. It's really, really important. And I think that there's also one thing to say about this that is really, that, that, that's maybe different from other art fields. If you look around when you go to festivals, for et cetera, et cetera, uh, you see that many young creators are already creating works that are maybe 20 minutes or 40 minutes or maybe even 60 minutes. If you compare this to going to a music festival, you can have a young artist coming on stage singing one song. Maybe they have three songs. That's all they have. That's all, th that's all, th that's all that they're getting famous for. Then they get an investment and then they make a full album. In our field, it's a little bit different. When I started creating, I started creating pieces that were 60 minutes because that was what was, uh, was demanded of it. It's very different to start creating something that is five minutes or 60 minutes. So if you have the opportunity to try to start creating stuff, maybe a little bit internal for yourself, internal, that can be five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, you will have you know, more opportunities to then go towards that full length and the full duration pieces that are required later on. And I know you had a great talk with, about dramaturgy yesterday, and, 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 and so we won't go into that uh, uh, in detail today. Okay, we'll go from creation to structure. Structure can mean many, many, many things. It can also be a choreographic term, but we won't use it as a choreographic term today. Today, when we're talking about structure, we'll talk about how to structure one's business and how to start building that. If you think about how you treat your body and your training as a holistic thing, as a 360 holistic thing, and you now maybe want to start creating work and create opportunities for yourself to work in the sector, you also need to treat the business as a holistic thing. So thinking about it in the same way as, as treating your body, treating the things that you create and the, and the knowledge that you have e is equally important. So look again at the name in front of you. Is this the name you want to work through? Is this the name that you want to, to embark on? Is this the name that you want to use when you're going th forward in the, into the world? Is there something else that's been lurking in your mind? Is there a company name? My first company name was Equilibrium. There's I think there's 15 companies in the world called Equilibrium. <laughs> uh, what's your, is there a company name that you want to use? Or is it your own name? Would you like to uh, create name under an alias? Would, you, uh, would there be another name? Or is it your, your own name that you're going to market? Are you already working in a group together? Are you, are you in a group together that you want to work with? Or are you wanting to, to market your name uh, uh, by yourself? This is really interesting though. Make it easy and fun. Creating a business structure can be very simple. You can just you know, create an entity. And every country has different kinds of entities that you can work through. In Sweden, there are different kinds of entities, judicial entities. The best thing for this, because this can feel a bit daunting, is to get help. Ask somebody that runs their own business. It's very simple. And probably if you think about somebody in your family or in your closed circuit that runs their own, sec their, their own business, get their help. Instead of trying to figure out everything yourself, try to get help from somebody to, uh, to, build, to build your structure. Uh, make sure that when you go out into the world that you're both ready to be employed, to sign a contract to be employed, but also to send an invoice. Because many people are now, many, many creators, many dancers, many dance studios, etc., cetera, are, uh, they don't employ people. They instead, they, they want you to invoice. So make sure that you have this ready when you go out into the world. And depending on where you are in, in, in the world, there are different entities for how to, to invoice or to, be, uh, to be, or to be employed. Creating this entity also creates opportunity for you to go to funding, to, create, to, to go to, uh, to funding for your work if you want to work. 
So the really simple tools for creating your own structure is ask family and friends for help. Mom and dad, maybe some of you have people that run their own business or a sister or a brother or somebody in the family. Think about the name you want to choose for your structure. Start a business so you can easily be employed or invoiced directly when you get out of, of into the world. Ask for help if you feel lost. Don't expect yourself to be a tax expert. I'm not a tax expert, it's really, it's really hard. Ask for help in all these structures. There's also a little bit of a, a, a trick here. Uh, if you want to get people closer in your circuit around you that don't necessarily understand dance, you can ask them for help in terms of your structure and they will get closer to dance because everybody wants to help everybody. People want to necessarily to, to help and people love supporting you when you're building your own structures. So ask people for help and they'll also get closer to the actual thing that you're doing, creating work and creating dance. Okay, so let's say we've gone from finding a way to create work with entered into a structure of, 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 uh, of being able to, to, f to fundraise and, and get funding and, and so forth. Opportunities and funding is my section three. There are billions of opportunities to go towards in this sector. Open calls, funding calls, uh, auditions, etc. And this in the same manner as I said about a creative diary, make an opportunity diary. This you can create also and share with each other. It's a really great tool. You could share this, make a Google Docs and just share it with this group. And everybody puts in all the opportunities that comes across you. There are also really great websites for this. Uh, go on Dancing Opportunities, look that up, and you'll have all, m most of the collected uh, opportunities in, in the dance coming on to that field. And keep track of it. Keep track of those opportunities. Um, those opportunities will also will include auditions, they'll include uh, open calls for, for uh, creation, and they will they'll also include funding, etc. If you want to start creating your own work, and you're also really aspiring to get funding for it, it's really important to think way ahead of when you, on, on, on the road of, of, of creating a work. So what I, what I do every second, third month is that I keep a diary of opportunities and I fill it in, I look up on the websites, I look into the, those deadlines and I, re and I, and I, I update this, this diary of opportunities uh, so I can keep track of when and where I need to go uh, uh, and submit my, my funding applications. And if you do it well in advance, you'll have a more sort of uh, secure and calmer way of looking at it when you, when you have to do it. Um, many of these funding opportunities, if you haven't done funding, takes a long time. You, the, the actual application itself takes a long time, but it also takes a long time to get a reply on those applications. So keeping track of the timelines of these applications are really, really important for you not to get stressed, but also to be able to communicate towards other people around you in the sector about how long it's going to take you to be able to get towards uh, uh, saying a yes or a no to creating a new work. And for all, also to keep track of this, when you're a performer and dancer, all your employees in the freelance world will, in the back room, be doing this funding work. So be patient also with the people that you're working with. People are waiting for replies, people are waiting for decisions, etc., on those projects that you guys are, are in. I think it's also important to, to think about when and how to decide on starting to create and, and, uh, and, and go for funding in your own work. Not, it's not, not necessary to start creating your own work. You can, do, you can be in the sector for, the, for the, your complete career as a, as a great dancer, performer, teacher, etc., etc. If you want to start creating work, there are different ways of doing this. Many of the choreographers that I started working with, they started creating work right out of school. They started creating work in the, in, in the freelance sector. Very, very simple. They rented a space, they, they got a group together, and they started creating work, and from that something grew out of it. Many other choreographers, they dance in a company for a, for a long, long, long time, and then they get an opportunity to maybe create work on that company where they are in. It's also a very, very typical way of getting towards being a choreographer. 
Uh, this is what we call in English a commissioning. You know, when a company calls you and says, I want you to come and create a work on this group of people, a commission work. This is different from the thing that, that I stated first when you decide that I'm going to create the work myself. In the commissioning world, you will have the liberty and the, the responsibility of creating a work on a group that are all, is already there. You won't have the responsibility for the, for, the, for the finances, for all of this, but you'll have other responsibilities. In this section, you're running it all yourself, running your own business. You're employing all the dancers, you're employing everybody. And those things are, of course, very different from each other, but they give different liberties of also how to create stuff. Many choreographers that I work with, they do both. They go between this, creating their own work, and commissioning. They go to a third thing. They do choreography for musicals. They do uh, uh, choreography for music videos. They teach, etc. So many of the choreographers that I have, they have five or six different things that they do to, to fill their, 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 their daily lives. And you can think about this, of course, uh, uh, in comparison to what you're doing now, that you have to fill up your, your days with, with very different, uh, your, your year with very different assignments. In, if you're going to go towards, uh, towards uh, funding, uh, this beginning thing that I said, those 10, 15 words in the very beginning of this talk, those can be really important to keep track of because they maybe they will help you to write that first statement, that first artistic statement of what you think is important when you go into funding and trying to find money for, for creating work. Okay, so... In the, same, in the same thing uh, about, about funding um, is that I think that you should ask people around you to, uh, um, do, to see how they did it. How do they do it? How do they start? Ask people to r read your texts when you're writing them. Uh, ask people that you know to read your text, but ask also somebody that you don't know to read your text. Uh, will they understand it? Do they understand it? Does it make sense to you, etc.? Sit down and update this diary of opportunities every two and three, every maybe ten, eight, tenth week, and look at what, what, what is going on. Use, for example, dancing opportunities as a web page to look into possibilities, etc. Last section. Creation we talked about. Structure, which structure do I, which I, do, I th do I go through and work through? Funding and opportunities to keep track of. And then the last one maybe now, networking and distribution. When I came in, I said that I was an agent. Does anybody in this room have an agent? Does anybody in this room know what an agent is? No. Does it ring a bell to you when I say, say the word agent? What do you think of? What are you thinking of when I say agent? Like a casting agent, like a casting agent. very nice. Well, there is one in uh, Berlin, I think, the, the company, the Berlin Theater, where they like, uh, call dancers. Yeah. There is, there are a few, there are a few agencies in Berlin yeah. that work that, like we do. But we are like private, no? We are private. Ah. We are private. Right, dancing. right. I think it's a government-funded. Okay. Th that might be. Agent is a very, it's a very, very, very strange word. I mean, it comes from, <laughs> it's come basically come from the, sp from being a spy. You're an agent. You know, it's a Cold War term. I'm an agent. I, you know, you spied on people. That's not what I do. <laughs> uh, an agent, like you said, it, it can be very many different things. You can be a casting agent when you work in film. That means that you're casting a certain set of roles with certain a role, uh, certain set of people. You can be an agent in classical music for opera performers, etc., where, uh, where you have individuals that you are self, uh, putting into different opera companies and, and productions, etc. There's various ways of being an agent. The way that we work uh, as an agency is that we take, try to take care of the works that artists have created. So I'm not necessarily selling individual, I'm not uh, distributing the work of individual people, I'm distributing already finished choreographic works. So if you think about pieces that you're in, our aim is to try to get those pieces to be seen by more people. 
And one of the things that the dance has a, you know, a bit of problem is that circulation is really, really hard. It's, a, it's an art form that many people uh, don't necessarily get to see because there are so many few uh, opportunities to tour in this world. That's why I think touring is still very, very important. I think touring and going on tour is really, really important. And this is something that you have to think about in your, in your, in your practice forward. How to, how, to, how to think about this? How to think about ecology? What's your stance on this? How to travel into the world? How to distribute work? How to distribute work and how to send it out, etc. And networking, of course, is a really important thing. It is important to have a strong network, but it's not important to have a large network. It's important to have a solid network. That's why I also really, really love this title of this week, Solid Grounds. It's, there's, there's no point of having thousands of people that you know li a little, but it's really important to have a few people that you know in the sector and to build that further on. So while keeping this creative diary, while keeping this words, list of words that develops on your, on your, uh, on your scale of things that are important, while keeping your, having a structure that you can work through, I think it's also important for you, and this is something that you can do uh, during summer or during the fall, is to start creating a small list of people and organizations that you worked with during your life and that you think are important for you. And it, this is not a competition of having the best contacts or the most contacts, because it doesn't really matter how many contacts you have unless they're really, really solid. And I try to think of this as a platform. If you think about, uh, you know, if you think about a structure like this or, or <laughs> a platform, you need to have certain amount of legs under a, stru under a structure for it to hold up. So you, you want to have certain, uh, a certain amount of pillars under your structure for it to hold up. And you want to have a certain amount of pillars so that if one pillar uh, or if one leg breaks down or rots or disappears or dies or goes away to another sector, then the, the platform is still solid. So maybe you can think about this as a career uh, path forward. Who are those contacts that you, are, that you have right now? What do they mean to you? They can be individuals. They can be schools that you worked with or that you went to. They can be some festivals or maybe some presenters that have already shown interest to you. Who are they? Uh, and, and to keep, keep an updated list on, ho on, on, those th on, on, on what the, who they are and, and wh what they are. Also to remember in terms of networking is that I might be in my position today, but tomorrow I might be in another position. So maybe it's more about individuals than organizations sometimes also to follow individuals where they are. And that's why it's also so beautiful to build these networking possibilities early on as you're doing now. Because many of you people can, you, you will be able to help each other in various different manners uh, uh, during your career. Also, as a last point on this list of contacts, do a short list of also the things that people that you want to meet. Who are those people that you want to meet? Who are the people that you really feel like this, I want to go towards this context or this individual or this opportunity? There's nothing wrong with ambition. <laughs> Think about it and what's your ambition? How do you want to structure it? How do you want to, who, who do you want to go to? And then ask and see if you can go towards those opportunities. Okay. So Regardless of what you're going to choose to do uh, after this, I think really thinking about how to take care of creation and creating, how to take care of your structure, how to keep track of opportunities and funding in a slow, slow way, and how to keep track of your networking and your distribution. And don't Com don't compete with anybody else than yourself in this. Look at, look at what is important for you. Don't think, think about quality rather than quantity. Look at it as it is now. And the beautiful thing about also documenting where you are right now is that you will see that there is actually a solid ground. There is some solidity to what the network that you have uh, already uh, at this point. 
All right, good. That's our, that's our time. Uh, maybe we have a few minutes for questions. Do we? Okay. Does anybody want to ask any questions? Yes. Um, there's this thing in, in France. There's too many small companies of like, people leaving school or like, young creators that are doing their own administrative structure. And now there's some uh, associations that are kind of acting like hosts for yeah. young projects. Or for, but would you still recommend to do your own, own structure? Or uh, this is a very, very good question. Did any, everybody hear this? No. In France, but also in Sweden and in many countries, there are organizations that host uh, uh, artists and produce and take care of projects through, their, through a joint organization. I think this is a great idea. And the question was, would I recommend you to go towards that or start creating your own company first? I, think, I actually think that if you are uh, in the beginning of it and have less, less money and less structure, this is a great way to do it because it really helps you. Uh, almost half of the choreographers that we work with and I represent, they actually work through a company like this. And this is very practical. There is a structure there. You don't need to have your own entity or, or your own company. You apply for funding or you get employed through this company and, then, and, and you get paid through this company and the company does the bookkeeping for you. And it's very similar in many, many other fields as well. Many other fields have these opportunities as, as well. This will save you lots of administration. What it won't save you is a little bit of money because it's going to cost you a little bit of money. It, but, but everything is going to cost you. So it's worth thinking about if you want to skip administration, this is really a, a, a very good time saver. So I, my question is, I would, I, if, you, if you don't like to do that much administration, I would definitely use one of these tools or these circuits to, uh, to start creating your own, your own things. And many, uh, I, I think that uh, actually many uh, choreographers that have done it, they've, they've actually stayed on in this structure for a long time, or maybe after, after, they've, after their operations have grown much larger, they've started to, to, to form their own entity. It's a, it's a great time saver. It's a, very, it's, a, it's a great time saver. Any other questions? No? Any other questions? <laughs> okay, great. I'm here all day, and there's a talk in the afternoon as well, so just look me up with anything you need, and I'll, I will leave my cards here and just get in touch with, with us if you need, have any, any follow-up questions for, for today. That's it. Thank you. Thank you.